Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are still in the chapter 5 of the set B and looking forward to the remaining three questions from this chapter and then we will be moving to chapter 6. To start with the day, the next question we have for you is question number 36 and uh, it's talking about the way of communication. So here it says, uh, you are a member of test team located in North America, developing a product for the client located in Europe. The team is agile and follows the DevOps uh, approach and uses a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. Which of the following is the least effective way to communicate test progress to the customer. Now before, uh, as usual, as I keep telling you that uh, the more we know about the context, the better our conclusions and the right answer would be. So whenever you have the context clear, start elaborating it in your mind that what do you know about it and how much you can really understand from the given information. Number one, the team is distributed. Okay, so that means they are not sitting together, they are not co-located. So there are certain specific modes of communications which we can make use of, which is like electronic communications, so using some uh, detailed reports so that the other side team can understand. And syncing up might not be so much possible, and even if possible, it would be more of like digital, uh, kind of like uh, email and written communications because they, are, they do have different time zones and may not be able to sync at the same time. So that is where uh, some of the things would, uh, you know, could bring back the knowledge what you have from the tutorials. And at the same time, the second important thing which is shared here is that the team is following DevOps. That means most of the things are automated in a pipeline. So they hardly need some communication, but at the same time, they have a rapid pace pace of delivering things to the market. So it's not a generic process where we need a lot of discussions to happen. At the same time, it should be fast paced. That means quick deliveries are happening. So we need to take everything into account to conclude that which one of the following is least uh, recommended options to have the communication among these two teams. Now let's quickly look at the option because it seems to be very straightforward. The option A says face-to-face, uh, -face. number two says uh, dashboard, C says email, and D says video conferencing. Now I think uh, dashboard, email are some of the recommended options here because uh, you are dealing with a team which is not exactly co-located. And the option D, when we talk about it says video conferencing because if the team is distributed, this could be another relevant option which you can talk about because even if you can sync up for a few words, you can really talk about conferencing through a video communication option or tool and get onto a call. But face-to-face -face is not something which is possible here because people are too, in two different continent and it's not something that they can just jump on to another city, another state or another country to take a call face to face. So this is not recommended in this scenario just because the team is distributed. So to looking to this particular question and to conclude that the right answer for this particular question is A, that is face to face is the least effective way to communicate test progress to the customer. However, we don't want you to get carried away by the word least effective way. It is an effective way, but in this given situation, this is not something which is efficient enough or effective enough to apply, right? So don't get carried away that face-to-face -face is an effective way and we can always make use of it. So why are we saying that? The question is wrong. Now, many people will certainly ask me this, but let me tell you, it's not about that face-to-face -face is not an effective way. It's more about in this scenario, this is not recommended, okay? So let's move on to the next question. The next question we have is question number 37. And uh, this question is more about uh, the configuration management and it says which of the following best describes an example of how configuration management support testing. I think uh, this was a very small, uh, in fact, the smallest topic of this entire syllabus that is configuration management. And on a higher level, we discussed very clearly that configuration management is uh, a, a concept and a context which basically deals with uh, four major things that is unique identification of every single item, the version control, managing the history of revisions and traceability. 
As far as we are talking about these four things, configuration management helps us to do this for the testing artifacts and testing work products as well. So in, in any, any, any context, be it about the development, design, project management, they just take care of these four things, that is ID, version control, uh, the management of the history, the changes which has been done on that, and the traceability which is linking. So I think that's pretty much so. Let's see what exactly the options are trying to say. Option A says uh, having the version number of the environment. Okay, good. The CM, that is configuration management tool, can retrieve the version numbers of the libraries, stubs, and drivers used in that environment. That I think very much makes sense that configuration management helps you to do version control and at any point can retrieve the versions of any of the artifacts which you're managing in the project. Okay, great. Let's go to option B. Option B says having a record of values of the test inputs, the CM tool can execute the test cases. Hold on. I think this is where we can terminate it. That execution is not about the configuration management tool. They just manage the four things which we told you. But other than that, they are not capable of anything. So execution is not an option. So CM does not help you do that. But still to complete with the option, uh, test cases, execute test cases for these configurations and calculate test coverage. Not at all. Okay, so let's go to C. Having uh, data about the date of purchase of the software license. Uh, the CM tool automatically generates information about the fact that the product license is coming to an end. Uh, again, uh, when we mentioned the four critical activities with the configuration management tool takes care of, it is not that it deals with license management. We have a different component in every single tool, which is separately to talk about the license management, and they take care of the reminders, automated emails to the administrators that when your license is expiring and uh, you need to renew it, etc. But it's not the job of the configuration management tool to do the license management. Let's go to option D. Option D says uh, having the version number of the test case, that's great. The CM tool can automatically generate test data for the test cases. See, having version number of the test case is good, but it cannot help you to generate the test data. We have learned something in the chapter six. We told you that test data generation tools are something different than that of test case creation, that is test design tool, test execution tool, test management tool. So test data preparation tools are the tools which helps you prepare the data, not the configuration management. And in that context put together, the right answer for this particular question comes to be A, having the version number of the environment, the CM tool can retrieve the version numbers of the libraries, tabs, and drivers used in the environment. So Having a good knowledge, trust me, would only help you to get to the right answer. Uh, it's not about by hearting a question, getting to the right answer. It's more of like the knowledge what you have gained about this particular subject. Let's move on to the next one. And the next question we have is question number 38. And uh, this question is talking about uh, defect report. It says uh, you are testing a sort function that gets a set of number as input and returns the same set of numbers sorted in ascending order. So we just got the functionality of this particular sort function. It's as simple as like sorting the numbers in the ascending order. The log from the test execution looks as follows. So uh, just spend some time going through the uh, log details uh, of an execution. Uh, I think we have environment configuration, some numbers representing a test case set, then the test run ID is 736, start time, and at the bottom, if you see there's an end time, so it just took altogether two milliseconds to run it. Fantastic. And we have five test cases here, TC1, TC2, 3, 4, 5. And if you see TC1 has input as one number, that is three, and output is three, and the result has passed. Test case two has three, 11, six, and five, and output is three, five, six, 11. So it's doing pretty much the right sort in the ascending order, and the result has passed. And test case three says eight, seven, three, seven, one. Output is 1378 and it failed. The reason is I think we had duplicate values here that is 7 and 7. So it uh, did not really do that well because it should be 1, 3, 7, 7, and then 8. So repetition and duplicate values, the mechanism or function is not able to understand. Let's move to test case 4. It says minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, and minus 3, minus 3. 
and the output is minus three and minus two. It sorted it well because in the number line system, if you see the number line system starts with uh, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, right? So sorting is perfectly fine, but again, the mess is with the uh, duplicate values, all right? And same way, test case five, it says zero, minus two, zero, three, four, four. So it went well uh, with the ascending order. That is minus two, zero, three, four. But what about the repetitions? So let's see what exactly the question is saying. Question says, which of the following provides the best description of the failure that can be used in a defect report? Exactly. So the question is not about what exactly is happening and how exactly it's happening. It's more about what is that information, what you should share with the developer, helping them learn and understand the failure and then solve the purpose. So let's go and read the option for that. Option A says uh, the system fails to sort several sets of number uh, of numbers, references TC3, TC4, TC5. I don't think uh, this option looks really great, though it's uh, one of the good option because it fails to sort several set of numbers in TC3, 4, and 5. But the only problem is it's not the problem with the sorting because sorting is done absolutely correct. But point is, uh, it's, it's messing up with the re repetition of a number. So let's see if we have any better option than that. B says the system seems to disregard duplicates while sorting in three, four, and five. That is more better than option A because if you look at the question, a question says best description. Okay, so we should always think of the best. So B is better than A uh, when compared to the description provided. Let's go to option C. Option C is saying that the system fails to sort negative numbers uh, in TC4 and TC5. But the problem is with the duplicates, which happens in TC3 as well. So I cannot just be uh, uh, talking about TC4 and TC5. And uh, that's not alone about negative numbers. It's more about repetition and however negative uh, is getting sorted, okay, in the right order. And D says TC3, TC4, TC5 have defects, duplicate input data, and uh, should be corrected. Uh, okay, that's that's a nice uh, statement to say, but uh, this is not enough for a developer to understand, okay, what exactly went wrong, what exactly went wrong. So if I go with probably uh, option B, uh, it would say more uh, detailed statement for someone to understand, okay. And uh, if you see the option D, once again, it says TC3, 4, 5 have defects. Uh, no, not exactly, okay. We are not over, uh, worried about the data. It says you have defects in the input data. Okay, so uh, I'm not here to raise concern with the input data. And it's nowhere mentioned in the scenario that you may have data uh, which is provided as input also wrong. So as far as they say somewhere anything about it that your source of data is wrong or your source of data is unreliable, that is where you can talk about option B. But as far as this is not given anywhere, you may not just say that the data provided is wrong. Okay, so it's more about raising a defect with respect to the sorting function not with the data at this point of time. So for that, I think we can very well conclude. And the right answer for this particular question is, B, the systems seems to disregard the duplicates while sorting, reference TC3, TC4, and TC5. Now I think uh, that's what I would like to repeat again and again in all my videos that having uh, patience, attention, and attention to detail would only be the thing which will help you to conclude with the right answer because you may feel here that even D is fine, A is fine, B is fine. But as far as you see the word best in the question, that's the most critical and crucial part of the examination that, hey, you may find partially correct answers, but there's only one which is best. So which is, which is that? So that's all we have to do. Anyway, so with that, we can conclude this tutorial. So that's all from here. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.